Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about a really fun topic, which is how to host an in-person sip and see. So this is one way that we have grown our business over the years, and it's been a huge blessing at Foster's Community. It really moves people along in the process quicker. It is amazing for third-party validation, and it's just fun. So I want to encourage all of you to consider using this as part of how you grow your business, because I truly believe that you will see growth and you will learn as you go in this whole process. And I wanted to talk about really quickly, a couple of things you do not need. Cause sometimes when people think about hosting an in-person event, they're like, Oh my word, you know, man, they have all this head drama about why they can't do it. And so a couple of things just to remind you guys is that you don't need a big fancy house. You don't need every product on hand. <laughs> you don't need a bunch of food and a fancy display. Um, you don't need to know everything. And you know, people, people honestly love just the outflow of hospitality and community and being part of something that you host. Okay. So put the drama aside and, um, and be willing to try this because I truly believe that you will see some amazing thing, ha amazing things happen in your own personal growth and growth in your business as you host more in-person events. I will tell you when I started Plexus, I was probably two or three months into my health journey when I heard about a, who, a girl who's now a friend of mine, but that had, I had watched from afar for over a decade. And she posted about hosting a, a health seminar in Indianapolis. And I was like, I'm going to that. And so I went, I, it, I had to drive a couple hours to get there, but it was amazing. And I came home pumped about plexus she shared her plexus story she did a whole you know slideshow presentation of the products and business it was like two hours it was a big event and i came home fired up i remember talking to justin out in the garden i was like i am so excited i am doing this thing and i'm hosting an event at our house this week <laughs> and so i think i scheduled it for either tuesday or thursday and so i acted with urgency and just did it it, it was imperfect, it, but it was totally fine. I didn't even know if anyone would show up. So I just threw, put a little graphic out on Facebook and invited people over to my house to learn more about these Plexus products. And when it came down to it, I realized I had one stick of Slim left. I don't know that I had any, any product display at all. <laughs> I had my story and lo and behold, I came to the day of the event. I mixed up my one stick of slim in a gallon, like a, a gallon, a mason jar, sorry, a mason jar, which was like a quart size and poured my little samples from there. And I just shared what I knew about the products, how they were helping our family. And then I think one of the most beautiful things that happened at the, that event was that you know, my sponsor was not there. <laughs> she was not able to come. She lived a couple hours away. I don't even know if I told her I was doing that, but her, her, her mother came actually. And it was beautiful what happened because when Joni shared her health testimony, people listened. And I honestly think that was more powerful maybe than anything else that happened that day. <laughs> And it was the power of third party validation and people knew her and they trusted her and she had an amazing allergy testimony. And so anyways, you can host a little sip and see and do it imperfectly just like I did. And guess what? Little secret. I still host in-person sip and sees and I still do them imperfectly and they still work. <laughs> okay. So I think you just have to remember that not every sip and see you host is always going to be a home run and that's okay. And anyways, what does home run mean? Right? Typically what I've seen and I'm, <laughs> I'm a three-star diamond and I'm a, um, Justin is a diamond and I'm a senior Ruby on my reentry. So like we have combed through multiple ranks in this business, but our sip and sees are not ginormous events. And what I have learned is that that's fine. It's actually a beautiful, it, it, it's a beautiful experience when it's small and it doesn't have to. And, and so it reminds me of that scripture that talks about don't despise the day of small things. I think, I think that's it about there's more connection that you're able to make when the group is smaller than if you have 20 or 30 people there, you know, it's just a different vibe. And so I often just have to be ready on the fly to pivot. However, we need to pivot, but I wanted to share a couple of things to help you guys put some little tools in your toolbox to, to then go 
put into action and practice as you guys host things. So what you do need is a desire to love and serve others, a desire to make it fun. So don't forget the aspect and a willingness to invest. And this is one thing that sometimes I hear people talk about, like feeling, I don't know, scarcity or like, oh my word, you know, investing in their business, but that's part of business ownership. And the fact that we can start this business for 10 bucks and the cost of our welcome pack is kind of laughable. If you think of how many hundreds of thousands of dollars people invest into brick and mortar businesses all the time. And so putting out a, a little bit of money for a couple of incentives or some little prize giveaways or whatever is really a very small investment comparatively. So I have a little checklist that I was going to go through with you guys. Uh, one of the things, so you can think of this in terms of hosting your own sip and see, because you can do this for yourself anytime you want, right? Anytime you want growth, you host an event, right? Um, but also think of it in terms of how you would help someone host a sip and see, okay? Because obviously you're going to do this for yourself first, but then as your team grows and you build a team, you are going to teach them how to do these and you're going to walk with them maybe host for them. And so typically what I like to do is if people are local to me, I love to host two sip and sees in person, back to back, maybe a Tuesday evening and a Saturday morning, and then funnel people into an online event Sunday evening or Monday evening. And between those three things, sometimes we can only squeeze out one in-person event, and that's totally fine. But between those two or three events, people go sil silver and or senior silver right off the bat. And it also does a massive things for building belief, building connection, and just speeds up that process. So you can't think of the cost investment or even the time investment, because often, as we know in this business, there's often a, a lot of time and energy put forth first before the return on investment comes, right? So we have to be okay with that. All right, so number one thing to do is to make a list of 20, whether this is you or you are teaching someone what to do. So I'll often just say, hey, okay, first thing to do is go make your list of 20. And then we're gonna start inviting. And what I'll often do also is make a little graphic for people so that they have something to post onto their Facebook wall and or their stories, okay? So as they're inviting people and sending these little invites out, I will encourage them to make a post, <laughs> pop it in their stories with a little poll and go live. And sometimes people are willing to do all three. Sometimes they're only willing to do one of those things, but it's throw the net wide. And I tell them might as well, like I, if they act a little nervous about doing that, I'm like, what's the worst that can happen? You won't die. <laughs> okay. So sometimes just making it, you know, making a silly statement about it, that they won't die and to message me when they did it and we'll do a happy dance together. It just diffuses any sort of fear or drama around that. Okay. So here is what you say to invite. I'm having a sip and see at my house this Friday at 7 p.m. where you can come and taste my pink drink. It's all informational and you can hear some product stories too. And maybe you want to put a little something about a giveaway. And there's going to be goodie bags. Would you would you like an invite or would you would you be able to come? Okay, so you ask them and you leave a question at the end, okay? Number 2 is you keep track of who says yes, who says no and who says maybe. Okay. And the goal with this is five to six yeses. Okay. And you, if you're going to, to put some little incentivizing on it, you could tell them that a little goodie bag that they're going to get. Uh, you could also encourage them to bring a friend. And if they bring a friend, you could put a little cash on it and say, Hey, I have these $5 Walmart, Walmart gifts cards just for fun. If you bring a friend, your friend will get the, the $5 gift card or you could give it to them too. I don't know, however you wanna do that, right? These are just ideas, okay? You can pick and choose what you love and just try it. All right, the third thing is to have some water, maybe some lemon slices and some simple snacks. You don't have to go overboard, keep it super simple. My kids usually help me <laughs> set up the snacks or make some fun little things to, to, to spread out and you know, encourage people to enjoy or nibble on. And then I usually get the small, like little eight ounce or maybe even six ounce water bottles to mix up slim, active, hydrate. Sometimes I don't have every flavor and that's totally fine. And we have that in some little cups so people can taste test. And I actually encourage people to try mixing different things so they can taste test what things, you know, they like together. 
I love active and slim together. And so that's a great thing to suggest. Okay, number four is to prep some giveaways, door pri and door prizes. Okay, because everyone, it, it's always my goal that everyone goes home with something fun. Okay, it does not have to be extensive. Okay, you could just put two or three stick packs together and tie a little ribbon about it, around it and call it good, right? I have two things of hydrate and a active. You could also get some of these little cheapy uh, shaker bottles from Walmart. Go order you some Plexus stickers and pop it on there. And or these are little cheap pl plastic clear water bottles. I'll often have my daughter print some Plexus stickers from her Cricut machine and we'll pop them on the front, tie a little ribbon about it. You can put some the little, you know, ribbons down in the in the middle of it if you want to make it fancy and call it good, right? Super duper simple. Okay, um, I do like the the five dollar Walmart gift card idea for people if they bring a friend, and you could you could incentivize the person that brings a friend as well as the friend if you want, or you could do the five dollar gift card for if anyone brought a friend, and then the person that brought the friend, or I mean the, the friend themselves get gets the little goodie bag, the gifty. However you want to do it, you can get creative with that. And then Plexus actually has this free gift with purchase. Thing going on and they have for a while now but I love that with a welcome pack purchase you get a free bottle of ease or a free bag of active or whatever but sometimes what I'll do if I have a stash on hand of extra products I will just kind of put out some products on display and so whoever wants to get started first has first dibs on the little free product with purchase welcome pack purchase and they get to take it home with them and I think there is something to having a tangible take-home goodie with them a little freebie Okay, and then real quick, let's talk about the flow of the event. So I usually do a quick welcome. I usually let people chat a little bit so we may not get started, you know, right at two o'clock or right at seven o'clock. Sometimes it's, you know, 15 or 30 minutes after <laughs> just because people filter in. But then we have to have a hard start, which is a quick welcome. Then I will have pre-selected two or three people to share product testimonials, like literally five minutes or less. And then I will do or have someone do a little brief testimonial or sorry, not testimony, a little brief description of triplex and then maybe ease and X factor and talk about those for a minute. Sometimes what we've done is like a product trivia, which is really fun. So you're educating about the products, but it's in like a interactive game way. So that's also another idea. And then we open it up for questions. And that is really, really great because it moves people through the process faster because they're able to ask the questions or if they're too embarrassed to ask questions, other people will ask the questions for them. And it'll just be that like third party validation exclamation point on everything, which is awesome. And then from there, usually quick, brief business story. Uh, and it's really, really great if you have a couple of people that are new that have just fast started so they can say like, I just made 300 bucks or you know, Sally has made a thousand dollars already, or Laura has just started in November and she's made over $5,000. And this has been such a gift to her family. And this is why, like, it's really, you know, and so showcasing some of those stories to help people see, like, this isn't just, we make 25 bucks or in our cute side hobby, or we get paid in products. Like you get paid cash for helping people get started. And so, you know, it's always the goal then to, help people get started. So it do not be afraid of the call to action. And this is the mistake I made on my very, very first sip and see is that I did not have a call to action. Uh, and I actually, I found out months later that a, that a friend of mine had been or ordering through Plexus as an orphan for months and we got her transitioned over. But anyways, learn from my <laughs> mistake there. Always give the call to action. So you want to just wrap up the event, you know, after a couple of questions have been answered or asked and answered and just say, Hey, okay. I know some of you want to get started, so whoever wants to go first will get first dibs on the free, you know, freebie with welcome pack purchase. Who wants to go first? Okay, and then you can just start helping people get started. All right, another thing to to think about is take selfies during the event. Encourage people to be taking pictures, and then that will be easy, an easy ask for. Hey, my oh my word, we should make a little we should make a little post. Let's do it now. Okay, so th that's another idea you can use at your events. And anyone that brings a guest or guests will automatically, if that person signs up, get a plus one or maybe even go silver at the event, which is so awesome. 
And you can also encourage and invite anyone that wants to schedule a sip and see for next week <laughs> to do that. And you can get the next one on the calendar. So that is, um, those are some, some just simple, tangible things to do. The goal is for people to get started on the products and get three friends to do it with them. And it's totally fine to actually verbalize that at the event. Okay. Just normalize how simple and easy it is. And then let's see. Okay. So really quickly, let's talk about if no one shows up to the event. Okay, it is not the end of the world. And it's actually good to think through worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, what do you do? Well, if nobody shows up to your event, then you need to go live and share your story and share what Plexus has done for you. Okay, simple, easy pivot. That is plan B, okay? If you host an event for someone and no one shows up, then you both go live together and share both of your stories, okay? Super simple, easy peasy, all right? Um, and if you host an event and there are people there, but nobody signs up, no worries. You schedule an online event for a couple days out and funnel people, you know, the people that were at the event and also encourage them to invite some friends and anybody that wanted to come but couldn't attend, they get to go to the online event on Monday night at seven or whatever, okay? 15 minute messenger event or just run that little 15 minute event inside of a Facebook group, which is awesome because then you can go live and share stories and it's awesome, okay? Whichever way you do it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but just on, following up with an online event has been magical. And sometimes we will actually get more signups for an online event after an in-person event than the in-person event itself. But the in-person event is really, really great for building belief, building connection, uh, encouraging the people that have just started their products or just started sharing. It gives them a, a crazy amount of encouragement and belief to continue, okay? So the challenge for y'all is to schedule an in-person event soon, okay? So regardless of when you listen to this call, go schedule one quickly, okay? The idea is to act with urgency and then just go through the system of getting invites sent and invite, invite, invite. Throw that net wide, okay? Invite all the way up to the event and follow up, follow up, follow up. <laughs> that is so key, so important and make sure that you even either have a hard yes or a hard no from your maybes, okay? And then practice, learn and do it imperfectly because the goal is not perfection. The goal is um, continuing to expose people to our products and our opportunity and it is so fun. And when you do it, you will actually feel so empowered, so excited. And then when you do the next one, you're gonna pivot and learn from the one that you did previously. And it's just rinse, wash, repeat, teach your team. And guys, I cannot wait to see all the testimonials and all the fun things you learn from hosting in-person events, in-person sip and seats. All right, see you guys.